Another important second messenger that's activated by G protein coupled receptor is phospholipase C gamma or PLC gamma. Again, just like adenylate cyclase, phospholipase C gamma plays a critical role in activating many different pathways within the cell. And itself, it's activated by a number of signals, including G protein coupled receptors. So let's see how this works and what phospholipase C gamma does. So here's a ligand that comes in and binds to the G protein coupled receptor, activates it by forcing the exchange of GDP for GTP at the alpha subunit of the G protein. The alpha subunit then goes and associates with phospholipase C gamma and activates phospholipase C gamma. Now phospholipase C gamma extracts a molecule of phospholipid from the cell membrane and converts it into two components inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. The way to think about this is the following. You know that the cell membrane contains phospholipids, and phospholipids are basically portrayed as heads and tails. The head part contains a phosphate group, and the tail is made up of fatty acyl chain. So basically, phospholipase C gamma uh, separates the heads and the tails of these phospholipids molecules. So we have inositol triphosphate, which is the head part, and the diacylglycerol, which is the tail part. What do they do? Well, both IP3 and DAG activate a protein called PKC. PKC, or protein kinase C, is a kinase that phosphorylates a number of important proteins that then go on uh, to influence various different cellular processes. Now, inositol triphosphate, or IP3, also has another important function. And what that is, is that it actually goes on and activates vesicles that contain or store calcium within the cell. By activating them, it causes release of the intracellular calcium storage. So the intracellular calcium levels go up, and when intracellular calcium levels go up, they also cause a number of changes that affect cellular processes and functions.